nine months, four countries, countless Turkish breakfasts, a street dog called Scout, and one intimate hammam later, our winter tour of Turkey has come to an end. We left the UK in August of 2021, celebrating in Champagne in the late summer sun. Our route took us to the south of France, where we found ourselves by accident on one of France's infamous and terrifying balcony routes. Okay, well, this is how I feel about the road that we've just driven on. But the tears weren't in vain. The place this road led us to was worth every drop of adrenaline. From France, we crossed into Italy, where we caught the nine hour ferry to Greece, arriving at midnight on my birthday in a chaos of lorries and migrants. Like three guys trying to scale this fence in the barbed wire and climbing. Northern Greece was our playground for the next few weeks as we explored remote Sogori villages, fought off mountain dogs and hiked deep into the Pindus Mountains. Autumn came with rain and storms and we crossed the border into Turkey. We were aiming for the south coast where our friends Chris and Marianne were opening a turtle centre. We celebrated with them before embarking on a huge road trip to eastern Turkey, diving headfirst into a country and culture like no other. We ate like kings in Gaziantep, witnessed ancient sites that changed the course of mankind, drove along the Syrian border and found ourselves the new parents of a street dog named Scout. Winter in Turkey arrived with some of the biggest storms and coldest weather the country has seen. It kept the roads quiet though and we had the idyllic and usually busy west coast all to ourselves. The solitude didn't last long as we met up with our friends Philly and Keeley for two weeks of mayhem. There was lots of food, lots of wild boar and a Turkish bath experience that bonded us together forever. <laughs> As if we hadn't seen enough of each other already, we took a 2,000 km road trip across the country to witness the magic of Cappadocia. Watching the balloons rise up over the snow-capped valleys, golden in the morning sun was a moment so beautiful it just feels suspended in time. But all good things must come to an end. With spring on our heels, we left this incredible country. Its people, its culture, its food, its beauty, they'll leave a mark on us forever. And now the time has come for us to head home, where we'll start an entirely new adventure. In July, we'll be shipping our van to Canada, ready to take on the Americas as we drive to Mexico and beyond. Who's joining us? If you are, make sure to subscribe and join us for the ride. Good morning guys from this beautiful forest park up somewhere in Bavaria in Germany. As promised today we'll have a Q&A video for you but before we get started I've got something to clear up. So after last week's video a few of you seem to think that we are stopping doing videos. We said it was the end of the trip which it is but it's definitely not the end of the videos. We've been doing weekly videos now pretty much for the past three years and we're not going to stop anytime soon. However after this video we are going to treat ourselves to a three week break whilst we go back and spend time with family who we've not seen for nine months but then after that we're going to jump straight into everything we need to do for the Canada trip and we will be back then. Okay so we asked you on last week's video and over on Instagram to send us your questions. We had so many questions so we've had to break them up into different sections. We've got our last winter turkey trip, the Canada Mexico trip, van life like in general and then some personal questions at the end. All right then, come on, question number one. Question number one, was Turkey safe? Did you feel safe van lifing in Turkey? 100%. We never had any problems in Turkey whatsoever. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Everybody was like overly friendly. Nothing was too much trouble. Yeah, in fact, it's probably yeah. one of the safest countries that we've probably ever been to. Yeah. Any places you visited that you'd like to retire? Greece. Yeah. Greece, yeah, fell in love with Greece. We have a soft spot for Greece. Very much so, yeah. yeah. Love to buy somewhere or do something in Greece, yeah, it'd yeah. be really, really nice. saying it was one of the places we spent the least amount of time. We loved Greece. Yeah. Did the changes we make improve our van life experience? Yes. 100%. Oh. Well, nearly ate a fly. A hundred percent, yes. Yes. Especially the windows. They have been amazing. The layout So much change. more light in since we've had those windows, isn't yep. it? Yep. Having the, like, the, um, the, the bed. bed, sofa bed yep. has been amazing. We've got so much space. We've been able to host people in the van. It's just, I love, I just love what the changes that we've made. Yeah. Okay, Chess, next question. Give me three highlights from the last nine month trip. 
Okay. Getting Scout was definitely one. The Hammam, that we did with Philly and Keely. Highlight of my life, that one was. And probably like the Zagori Mountains in Greece. They were absolutely incredible. Such a um, underrated part of Greece. Loved it there. Right. All right, so this is one of my favorite questions and it is, is there one story that didn't make it to camera? Because there are so many ah, stories that didn't make it yeah. to camera that we actually seriously considered doing a podcast about all the things that happened that we didn't capture on camera. Even around picking up Scout, if you're one of our patrons, you'll know the full story, but the, the actual like behind the scenes of what happened with Scout included Scout getting hit by a car, me and Marianne in the back of a police car, Marianne roaming around Halfetti on the back of a security guard scooter. It was crazy. But yeah, so many things just happen when you're not filming and they just happen so quickly in the moment that you just haven't got time to capture it all. There's that time we were in Dalian and it was late at night and there was this oh, yes. inebriated woman whose dog ran off and she was shouting him and shouting him. Inebriated? She was pissed. <laughs> she was pissed. Yes. And Ben had to, I stayed with the woman to make sure she was okay. She had no idea where she was. Ben went off into the back streets of Dalian, which if you don't know Dalian, it is like a grid network of streets. It's, it's you an, could easily get lost in there. It's an absolute maze. And Ben yeah. went off to try and find this dog called Charlie. And it is just by absolute chance that you happen to walk down this little side street that he was on and he was sat on a moped. We managed to get her into town. She found a way back home. We made sure she was okay. That was an experience. Yes, yeah. Obviously, we wouldn't film that. It wouldn't be very fair for her. But <laughs> no. yeah, that was an experience in, in a half, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we are thinking of toying with um, a podcast for that very reason. On to the Canada-Mexico questions. Okay, fire away. Are we making any changes to Sophia um, for the trip? Yes, minimal changes. We're going to add a second DC to DC charger. So that will be 60 amps. We'll have to upgrade the alternator as well. Uh, we are going to replace the uh, struts, the suspension struts front and back because Sophia's nearly 100,000 miles and they could probably do with being changed. Uh, we're going to give inside a lick of paint. But no major changes. No major changes. Oh, and we're going to upgrade our batteries as well. We're going to go for bigger batteries. Cool. So next question is, what are we going to do when we get to Costa Rica? because right-hand vehicle drives are illegal. They are indeed. If you didn't know, Costa Rica and Nicaragua both have a full-on ban on right-hand drive vehicles. So what we're gonna probably do is ship from Mexico down to Colombia. We might drive down to Belize and do as much of Central America as we can, and then drive back up to Mexico and ship from Mexico to Colombia. But that is quite far in the future. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But yeah, it's something we're aware of. And yeah, as far as we know, we can ship from Mexico into Colombia. Where we've parked up has been the most ridiculously peaceful place. We've been here for three days now and we've seen three people. We've seen a couple that went for a very short walk and a bloke that took a pee kind of like behind the van. But apart from that, we've seen no one else. It's been amazing. Okay, any quirky places you plan on visiting in the States? There's one place that I want to visit and that is Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> yes. Or near Area 51, or Area 51. Is yeah. I just I literally can't wait. I want to go to the UFO museum. I want to go to the UFO cafe, <laughs> bar, whatever they've got there. I used to be a <laughs> massive X Files fan, and 100% we're going there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so another good question that we've had is, are we worried about theft after what happened to Tread the Globe? Now, if you don't know, our friends Chris and Marianne have recently shipped their camper van from the UK over to the States. And when it arrived, they found that a load of stuff had been stolen, including like rugs and clothes and stuff. Unfortunately, when shipping, theft is a risk. So fear is too big to fit into a container. So she has to do what's called roll on, roll off shipping, where somebody drives your vehicle onto the ship. This means that they have access to your keys. For us, we can actually separate the cab and the living area, which is a massive bonus. It means that only customers will have access to the back of the van and that anybody driving the vehicle can only get into the cab. So that is a security kind of plus. It's a risk we've got to take. We know it happens and it's just something that we're going to try and minimize as best as we can. But like I said, having the cab and the living area closed off is like is a big is a big plus really. Is there anything that you're particularly looking forward to on this next trip? Yes. So next year, on the second leg of this big trip, we will hopefully be in Mexico again for the Day of the Dead, which is my birthday. 
and it would be absolutely amazing if I could celebrate it there. Also, Chester's birthday falls around the time of the Burning Man Festival, and it'd be awesome if we can squeeze that in as well. Quick fire van life questions. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. How do you wash and dry your clothes? We go to laundrettes. Where do you get dog food from? Pet shops, um, but in Turkey, vets had the best dog food. Which country is the hardest to find water and dump waste? Uh, the UK, hands down. <laughs> How easy is it to get drone shots? Um, they can be tricky when we're driving. I think this is about when we're driving. They can be fairly tricky, um, but Ben drives and I fly the drone. And just try our best not to lose it. And last but not least, do you use a preloaded card? Yes, we use Caxton card. Have used it since we started backpacking and really highly recommend them. It's a brilliant currency card. Ding, 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 ding. There you go. Do you plan to do Asia and is Africa still on the cards? Yes and yes, we backpacked around Asia for about a year and we'd love to drive the van there, it'd be amazing. And yes, Africa is still on the cards. When? Don't know, but it's still 100% on the cards. So this next question is a good one. How do you feel about the environmental impact of driving around Europe? Now, even though we are driving a diesel van around Europe, our impact on the world is still so much smaller than if we lived in a house. I think the average person uses about 152 litres of water per day in a house. 70 litres will see both of us through and the dogs for like over a week. 99.9% .9 of the time we are using solar power, so we're completely off grid, we're not pulling in any energy from the national grid. And also Sophia is a pretty efficient van. She's not an old van that's like a gas guzzler, so we get pretty good MPG from her. So yeah, even though we are driving a diesel van around, our impact on the environment is actually, I think, a lot smaller than if we lived in a house. Last couple of questions. Jane asks us, where do we see ourselves in five years time, if anything is possible? No idea. I'd like to. No idea. I'd like to have said we have done um, Africa, Asia, America, Europe. I'd like to have like travelled everywhere we possibly can in the van. Who knows? But it'd be nice to have built somewhere and have a boat. And a boat. And a boat. Yeah. Definitely, maybe have a home base somewhere, but we don't know, and we really like not knowing. The unknown is. I'd like to plan a month ahead at a time. So. Yeah, max. <laughs> yeah, and that doesn't happen often. Last but not least, do we plan on having kids in the future? No idea. No idea. For those of you that have been around for a while will remember that a couple of years ago now we had a miscarriage. Um, but since then, we've kind of decided that we kind of like our life <laughs> how As it is. is. Yeah. And right now, that's without kids. Not having kids is definitely an option for us. I think yeah. it's the easy way yeah. to say it. You know, we love what we do, the freedom we've got. Yeah. We've got these two. Yeah, I've already got two fairy the, babies. Yeah, these these two are a handful enough. We're still traveling, so who knows yeah. in the future? We shall see, we don't know. Right now, no. Right now, no, yeah. So we also had a lot of questions about the logistics and the cost of shipping Sophia over to Canada. And I just wanted to say that we're gonna answer all of those questions. Once we've done it, we're gonna do a full video on the process of shipping your van, the cost, the logistics, because everything at the minute for us is just like preliminary. We haven't done it yet. So we're gonna talk about that at length once we've done it later on in the year. We've also had a lot of questions about traveling with the dogs and people asking us to explain the process of what it's like to travel with them outside of the UK and around Europe. There is so much information to cover there that I'm actually gonna do a blog post about it and just share everything that we've learned and everything that we know about taking the dogs abroad with you. So hopefully that will help. So yeah, those may, all of those questions will be in a video and in a blog post. Well guys, that's it for the q and I hope it's been insightful and it's answered a lot of your questions. And we are gonna be leaving the videos there now for the next three three weeks while we go back and spend some quality time with our families and then we're going to be coming right back at you with Van Life UK and all of the Canada prep taking you along with us every week as usual so until then guys start looking forward to it guys yeah we shall catch you in three weeks bye, bye. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay guys, well on that note, we're gonna piss off basically. What am I saying? What am I saying?